All right, so here is our math homework page for today. We're on page 555. So it says there's the example, right? They always give us the example. So two truckloads of mulch are used to cover seven playground areas. Each playground receives the same amount of mulch. How much mulch does each playground receive? So in case you guys don't know what mulch is, it's kind of like dirt and, and um, wood, and, it, and they put it on the playground so you can play on it, right? It's like dirt and wood kind of combined. So there are two truckloads and seven playground areas. So my two truckloads are going to be divided into seven different playground areas, right? So they took each, here's one truckload, here's the other truckload. And they divided this one up into seven and put a little bit on each, the same amount on each and the same amount on each. So I'm going to say two truckloads divided by seven looks like this. Two sevenths. Two divided by seven equals two sevenths. This number is between the whole number of zero and one is what they're telling us, right? If I was going to count two sevenths on a number line, there's my zero, my one, my two. I'm just breaking this up into seven pieces, right? One, two, three, four, five, six gives me seven pieces. And I'd go one, two. Here'd be two sevenths. And it is between the numbers 0 and 1. 2 sevenths is bigger than 0, but less than 1. Right? If I needed a 1, I'd have 7 truckloads. And each playground would get its own truckload full of dirt. But they have so much dirt, they could split it up amongst the 7 playgrounds. So here's 3 pounds of potatoes. Make 8 equal serving sizes of mashed potatoes. Right? When I make mashed potatoes, I don't do one potato for each person. So it will make enough for eight servings. Eight people could have one scoop of mashed potatoes if I used three pounds of potatoes. Not three potatoes, sorry. Three pounds of potatoes. How many pounds of potatoes are in each serving? Represent the situation with a model, then solve. So each serving uses... three out of the eight pounds. Sorry, I said it wrong. So each serving isn't three out of the eight pounds. There's three pounds, right? I'm gonna divide each serving up by into eight pieces. My three, I have to divide it up so it's gonna be divided up into eight servings. But I only have three pounds. So three divided by eight is the same thing, three eighths. That's all they're asking you to do right now is just write the problem. So I know 3 eighths is bigger than 0, but less than 1, right? On my number line, if I had 8 eighths, it would be right here at the 1, right? This is 8 eighths. This is 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths, 8 eighths is 1. So 3 eighths is going to be 1, 2, 3 right here will be 3 eighths. And it is still between the zero and the one. All right, so my next on the back page. One large submarine sandwich. There's a picture of it, right? This is what I call a submarine sandwich. They're shaped like that long hoagie style. Is divided equally among four people. How much of the sandwich did each person receive? So if I take one sandwich and divide it up into four for four people, then each person is going to get one sandwich divided by four pieces. One-fourth of a sandwich. My next one. Four gallons of paint are used to paint 25 chairs. If each chair used the same amount of paint, how many gallons are used to paint each chair? Between what two numbers does your answer lie? So I have four gallons of paint, and I'm going to paint 25 chairs with it. 
So I'm going to take my four gallons and I'm going to divide it up into 25 gallons. And hopefully you can still see I'm not at one, right? I'd have to get 20. If I was making my number line here from zero, one, two, to find four 25ths, I'd go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And I'd go right here, one, two, three, four 25ths. It would be right there on my number line. But it is still between the zero and the one. Oh, I'll put a semicolon to separate the two parts of my number. Between what two whole numbers? So I'm going to write it between, I'm going to write my between up there since I drew my little number line there. Between zero and one. My answer for 25th is between zero and one. So here is Mrs. Larson, and she's making pillows from yards of the same fabric. So she's cutting up some material, some fabric, to make 12 pillows. She has 16 yards. <coughs> so I'm going to say she has 12 sixteenths. Oh, sorry, wrong way. She has 16 yards of fabric, and she's going to divide it up into 12 pillows. Right here, she had four gallons of paint, and we were dividing it up into 25 chairs. She has 16 yards of fabric, and she's dividing it up into 12 pillows. So, I can see this number. I can't leave it like that, right? I could even do a little bit at a time. I know I could divide my top by 2 and my bottom by 2. That's the e easy way to do it, right? 16 divided by 2 is 8, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. And hopefully you can see, right, I could have just div divided both by 4, because 16 is divided by 4, and 12 goes into 4. But I'm going to do it small, right? I did two at a time, and that just, because I could see that is an easier number. So I'm going to make this smaller, right? If I know both the top and the bottom of my fraction can be divided by the same number. I have to do it to make it as small as it can go. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. Right, this is just our math homework. So my answer is going to be 4 thirds. Right, and I can make this into a whole, uh, another mixed fraction. I've been doing it this way. Four goes in, three goes into four one time. One times three is three. Subtract, I have one left over. So I bring my one up from my numerator, and I keep whatever I was dividing my, my denominator is still the same as it always was. It's still a three. So four thirds is equal to one and one third yards of fabric. And one and one third on my number line Right, I'm dividing by three. So I just need two little lines to make three. I'm gonna go four thirds, right? I'll go one, two, three, four. It'd be right here. This is four thirds. One is the same as three thirds. So there's my four thirds. And I can tell it's between the numbers one and two. So I'll put my little semicolon there. And again, I'll write top and bottom since I was writing over here. Between one and two. My answer, four thirds, one and one third, is between the numbers one and two. So, so here is my next problem, number five. Sorry, and I probably am going too fast for my friends that are following me along, along with me. My nose was so itchy, I feel like I have to sneeze. So fill in each blank with the correct word to complete the sentence. The numerator is the blank number in a fraction, while the denominator is the blank number in a fraction. So my words I'm going to just use here are top or bottom. Anybody know and want to tell us which the numerator is? Is it the top or bottom number? No, 
though, Betty? All right, I'll do it. It's the top. And the denominator is the number on the bottom. Nice, I heard someone tell us. Top is the numerator, bottom is the denominator. And here's Elena. She drank five bottles of water over seven volleyball practices. How much water did Elena drink each practice if she drank the same amount each time? So I am going to say that she had five bottles of water and she divided it up onto seven volleyball practices. And I could see that is this answer, right? Five sevens. She had five bottles of water and she divided it up onto her seven practices. And that's it.